now we are going to discuss about the second part of the tcella where we will be discussing the lab diagnosis part so we will go sequentially in the lab diagnosis and as we have learned from our many classes that the first step in any lab diagnosis is the specimen collection and the specimen collection is based on the type of infection caused by that microorganism so tcella causes dysentery or the watery diarrhea so here the specimen of choice will be stool only so the specimen that we collect is the fresh stool okay and to maintain the viability of that organism in the stool that has to be transported in a specific transport media for that particular microorganism so for the cigella the uh, transport media of choice are the buffered glycerol saline and the carry blair medium okay the buffered glycerol saline and the carry blair medium please remember these these are asked in the uh, vivas as well so buffered glycerol saline and the carry blair medium are the transport media for the cigella okay so the fresh uh, stool is transported in these media and after they reach to the laboratory then we have to do the direct detection and that direct detection is uh, done by making a smear uh, on the directly from that stool sample so what type of what part of that stool is taken to uh, make the uh, uh, stain okay so that is the uh, mucus flakes so the mucus flakes which are present in the uh, the fresh stool sample those are used to make the smear okay and after making the smear those are stained with uh, all the you know stains different types of stains and after that we see uh, the bacilli if present okay uh, it may not be present also in that mucus flake that in that smear that we have made from that mucus flake but it we may see the bacilli plus we will be seeing the pus cells okay we will be seeing the pus cell so bacilli with pus cell may be seen after making the direct smear from that mucus flex in the fresh stool sample so after doing the direct detection we have to enrich the bacilli so that enrichment of the bacilli is done with the two broths okay with the two enrichment broths which are used for the cigella those are the gram negative broth and the selenite f broth this is also asked in the vivas so please remember that gram negative broth and the selenite f broth are used for the used as the enrichment broth for the cigella now why, why do we need this enrichment broth okay so this is because uh, uh, in the uh, colon there are many uh, commensals also so which may grow in the culture media if we want to selectively grow the cigella then we have to prefer the growth of the cigella by using some inhibitory substances which inhibit other bacteria other than the cigella in, in that stool sample so these enrichment broths are nothing but uh, a liquid media which contain certain uh, inhibiting substances which inhibit the growth of other commensal bacteria of the gut but let the cigella to grow in that enrichment broth okay so what is this enrichment broth doing this is preventing the growth of the co commensals of the gut and it is promoting the growth of the cigella in the in in its uh, you know in the enrichment broth so this is the function of the enrichment broth now after the enrichment broth then we have to do the culture so for the culture we can use any of the you know any of the culture media so it is inoculated on culture media the different types of culture media that is used for the cigella are the mcconkey agar the xylose lysine deoxycholate agar the deoxycholate citrate agar the salmonella cigella agar and the hectoin enteric agar hea after uh, inoculation on any one of those culture media then we have to incubate at 37 degrees centigrade for 24 hours and then we have to see the colony characteristics okay we have to see the colony characteristics so in the mcconkey agar we know that the cigella is a non lactose fermenter so here in the mcconkey agar we will be seeing the non lactose fermenting pale colonies in the mcconkey agar plus in the deoxycholate citrate agar we will be seeing again the non lactose fermenting pale colonies in the xylose lysine deoxycholate agar we will be seeing the red colonies without black center please remember this without black center okay because uh, the salmonella 
produces this red colonies with black center okay so that is the differentiating point between the salmonella and cigella the cigella is producing without black center while salmonella produces with black center because salmonella produces h2s gas which reacts to produce the black center okay at the growth so that is the differentiating point this is without black center this produces the red colonies without black center also in the heaar the their uh, cigella produces the green colonies without black center but the salmonella produces with black center okay so that is the difference Uh, between the cigella and the salmonella that is the differentiation is done uh, based on this xld agar and the hea agar next what we have to do is the culture smear so uh, with the discrete colonies smear is prepared on a clean grease free glass slide and then it is gram stained and we see under the microscope that there are gram negative bacilli arranged haphazardly okay we'll see the gram negative bacilli arranged haphazardly then we have to do the modality testing and for that we have to do the hanging drop method and we know that cigella is a non motile bacilli so it will be coming out to be non motile in the hanging drop as well and then we have to do the identification for that we can use the conventional method or the automated methods so in the conventional methods we have to remember the different test results so uh, we remember the different test results with the cocoi and the imvic uh, score so cocoi score for cigella is pn4 what is the meaning of this pn4 that is uh, first of all what is the meaning of cocoi so cocoi means catalase oxidase citrate urease and the indole so pn4 means catalase is positive okay catalase is positive and rest all other are negative rest all other are negative so coc this is one negative two negative three negative four negative so this is p n4 okay that is the meaning of the cocoi p n4 so cocoi score for this uh, cigella is the p n4 that is remembered with this uh, uh, i mean the test results are remembered with this p n4 mnemonic and then imvic test is NPN2 that means the indole is negative the methyl rate is only positive okay the methyl rate is only positive while the VP test and the citrate test are again negative negative so the imvic test for cigella is NPN2 and in automated methods we can use the malditoff or the vitek and then at last we have to do the antimicrobial susceptibility testing that is done with the disk diffu diffusion method on the muller hinter agar and by that we get to know about the most effective antimicrobial against that bacilli and we can use to get rid of that bacilli so this is the whole steps of uh, doing the diagnosis uh, in the laboratory of the cigella okay so by this we can diagnose cigella in the laboratory so first of all we have to collect the specimen we have to do the direct detection where we may find the bacilli or we may not find plus the pus cells will always be there in the direct detection and then we have to uh, increase the uh, growth of that you know uh, uh, the uh, target uh, or microorganism that is cigella in the gram negative broad or the selenite f broad then we have to do the culture in any one of that culture medias and then we have to incubate then we have to see the colony characteristics to differentiate between the salmonella and cigella we have the xld agar and the hactyon enteric agar then we have to do the culture smear with some discrete colonies we will prepare some smear we will do gram staining we'll see the bacilli arranged haphazardly and then we'll do the modality testing we know that cigella is non motile and then for identification we have conventional biochemical test where we have to write all those test results that is catalase oxidase uh, you know citrate urease and indole test results so only catalase is positive rest all other are negative so that is the test results and then imvic test results can also be written in the exams for getting good marks plus we have to do the antimicrobial susceptibility testing to know about the best antimicrobial against that microorganism so this is all about the diagnosis of the cigella